Hello, this is Gigi Carter with My True Self. I hope you are doing well and um, managing through all the craziness going on, on out in the world today with COVID-19 and coronavirus. Um, you know, it's been a range of emotions for me, honestly. Um, I've been, you know, afraid. I've been a little depressed, some anxiety. Um, but I've also found a lot of silver linings with this whole thing, one of which is actually the creation of this YouTube channel. And I am super honored to share a, um, an interview that I did with Dr. Joel Furman this morning on COVID-19 coronavirus and what we can do to build our immune system to hopefully not fall victim to this um, malice, malicious pathogen. Um, Dr. Joel Furman, I actually met him virtually back in 2018 when I published my first book, The Plant-Based Workplace. Um, I sent my manuscript to him and he was so gracious to give me an endorsement for that book. And then I had the great honor and pleasure of meeting him in Seattle when he gave a talk um, back in September of 2019. Um, I also featured him in a blog post that I did um, that highlighted how some of my favorite um, lifestyle medicine experts exercise. Um, so I'll include a link to that as well. Hopefully you get a chance to check that out. But Dr. Joel Furman is a board certified family physician. Um, many of you probably know him from his wildly popular book, Eat to Live. Um, he just recently came out with a book called Eat for Life, um, and it talks a lot about, you know, building your immune system. So it's a very timely book, and I actually just ordered it because it literally just came out a few weeks ago. So without further ado, um, here's my interview with Dr. Furman. Dr. Furman, thank you so much for your time this morning. I really appreciate you. Um, I know you're very busy and there's so much going on. I swear, I feel like I'm in a science fiction movie right now. Um, as of seven o'clock this morning, I checked the Johns Hopkins website and 738,000 people are infected globally with coronavirus, COVID-19, and over 35,000 people have died. Um, testing isn't widespread, as you know, and so these numbers are likely understated. So we know all the hygiene advice around keeping social distance, um, cleaning up, washing your hands, um, disinfecting high contact surfaces, but what are some other things we could do to prevent COVID-19 or any kind of pathogenic virus? Well, we have to put this in context. The first thing I'm always talking about is that we note that healthy people are not damaged or killed by this virus. And the healthier you are, the more minor of an illness it becomes. And it's not so much age determined, it's health determined. You can get healthier at any age. And we have massive, ubiquitous immune suppression and poor immune function in the vast majority of people due to obesity, smoking, junk food, fried food, and commercial baked goods, which strip up, when we eat empty calorie foods like white flour oils and fried foods, it strips, of us, of, it strips us of normal immune function. And we become vulnerable to cancer and heart attacks and strokes and dementia and infection. The, the, the um, silver lining to this is that maybe, just maybe, it might be a wake-up call to the anti to the cancer promoting nutrition that's prevalent in the modern world and the heart attack and stroke promoting nutrition that's prevalent in the modern world because now we're seeing those people who are most vulnerable to premature death from their eating style to be ones that are killed more readily by this by the coronavirus. So what I'm saying right now, um, we are not we have multiple lines of defenses against viral illnesses, particularly against this type of virus. The RNA is able, the virus is able to replicate and modify its RNA to escape immune system capture and invade cells. And it can promote cytokine storm and create a lot of fluid and, and 
um, mucus plugging, and it can get deep in the lung in people whose immune system is suppressed, and who and we and certain foods, and and of course, um, I advocate and teach people this nutritarian style of eating that includes all these foods that offer us protection against cancer and against viruses and against cytokine storm. What I'm saying right now is that green vegetables and onions rich in quercetin and other light compounds, the mushrooms rich in ergothionine and other beneficial compounds, the, so the green vegetables, the mushrooms, the onions, all these types of foods are designed to um, give us a full spectrum of nutrients that makes us protected, that protects ourselves. So when we get sick, a serious reaction does not occur. So this is just evident of the gross amount of ignorance in modern society that people just are, are, too, are too cavalier and put anything in their mouth. And I'm saying it's not just about keeping your hands against, away from your face. It's keeping those foods out of your mouth. Because though, because we know that, for example, um, commercial baked goods and fast foods double the risk of depression as well, increase risk of suicide. It's not just the coronavirus. It's all these causes, common causes of death. So people have to eat differently and have to start eating healthfully. And the acronym that aids in us nutritarians in remembering those foods I want people to consume each day is G-bombs. It's, it's the G-bombs, G-B-O-M-B-S, is more important now than ever because what is all this virus is doing, it's taking people that are at high risk of cardiovascular and cancer deaths. And it's, it's possibly in some of those cases, accelerating their death when they get the virus. But those are people who are likely and more prone to premature death um, already. You know, so the people most prone to premature death are the ones whose, pre whose death is gonna be accelerated possibly by this virus. And it's, you know, now's the time to make the change no matter what your age is, no matter what your health status is. When you make the change, you get improvement and you protect your life. G-BOMBS, G-B-O-M-B-S stands for greens, particularly salad greens and cruciferous greens like kale and bok choy and cabbage. B for beans, O for onions, M for mushrooms, and, um, and S for seeds, and oh, G bomb, B for berries and S for seeds. G O B O M B S, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. And we have an unprecedented opportunity in human history to eat more of these anti cancer foods in our diet than we've had in prior generations. Or in any, so what I'm saying is that a nutritarian diet is not a blue zone diet, because a blue zone diet is just people eating better than most Americans eat. And you're comparing a diet that's moderate, that's maybe some moderate improvement compared to the junkyard wreck. It's like buying a car by comparing it to a junkyard wreck. The American diet is a dangerous, wrecked, disgustingly, it's committing suicide with food. And then there's some of the areas where they eat a little better, they're called blue zones where they live maybe eight to, you know, six to eight years longer on the average or something or 10, you know. But a nutritarian diet takes that a way step above that to figure out what are the foods that are most protective, how to incorporate them in a tasty way in our diet, how to use modern farming and refrigeration and, and methods to get. We have, look, we have access to wild blueberries and microgreens and small baby kale and arugula. We have, we have access to foods our ancestors don't have access to and the blue zones do not have access to. And we can have more nutritional variety and improved immune function and longer life and we're not taking advantage of it. What about alcohol? I have some friends and some clients who have been really just distraught over what's going on in the world, whether it's they're seeing their portfolios decline or being out of a job and just having to adapt to what might be a new normal for a little longer, hopefully a little longer. They're finding, I guess, comfort in maybe drinking more than they normally would. Um, how does alcohol affect your immune system? Well, you know, what I'm discussing in this conversation with you is that the foods that have the most documented anti-cancer effects 
do so by arming our immune system to be more effective against abnormal cells that can turn into cancer and other ways they protect the body. And it's those same arming of that immune system that protects us against infections as well. So anything that weakens immunity or increases risk of cancer is gonna interfere with your ability to fight off infection. Your immune system that protects you against cancer protects you against infection. Alcohol is a known carcinogen. It increases risk of common cancers. In women, it significantly increases risk of breast cancer, and in men, it increases risk of squamous cell epithelial cancers, throat cancers, and, you know, and, and, and other cancers of the digestive tract. So we're talking here that it most likely suppresses immunity um, for the same way it increases. It's, its carcinogenic effects most likely suppresses immunity and increases risk of death from coronavirus. Okay, so when, we, when you talk about um, people with a compromised immune system, what, what disease conditions kind of fall under that? Because um, I've heard things like people that have heart disease, um, type 2 diabetes, um, you know, obviously HIV positive. Uh, what, what conditions, other conditions would you consider um, to be, um, you know, have, having a compromised immune system? I can answer that question. It's a difficult question to answer because I consider almost all Americans have compromised immunity because um, the optimal, because almost all Americans are overweight or obese and being overweight significantly compromises your immune system. There's no such thing as a healthy overweight person. Fat cells skew out cytokines and lipokines and because they're naturally, fat cells is naturally hypoxic tissue, more reactive oxygen species spew out, keep your immune system in a chronic state of inflammation. You have higher white blood cells counts and now when your white blood cell counts are needed to respond to an infection, they've been always, they've already been over we used in they're not they don't work they don't function well what i'm saying right now is that conventional socks conventional authorities consider that about 70 percent of the american population is overweight or obese but that's based on using a bmi of 25 the demarcation line between normal weight and overweight and i'm saying that a healthy bmi is below 23 not below 25 and that makes 89% of Americans overweight. And then the people that are not overweight, most of those normal weight people are people who either smoke cigarettes or drink a lot or have medical conditions that keeping them thin or are called cancers or digestive disorders or autoimmune conditions. So those people who are, who are conventionally thought to be immunosuppressed, smokers, drinkers, people with heart disease on medications, you know, diabetics, um, taking drugs, autoimmune condition drugs, those are in that most sometimes in the normal weight category because it's their diseases keeping them thinner. What I'm saying right now is only 2.4% of Americans have been shown in studies to be a normal weight because they eat healthy and exercise regularly. And that means only 2.4% of Americans probably have normal functioning immune systems. Now those are not nutritarians, those are just people eating healthier by American standards of good health, by the government standards of what a healthy diet is. The amount of people that follow a dietary protocol that's a degree of nutritional excellence that I recommend would be infinitesimally small to have the type of powerful immunity that affords us the opportunity to be protected against these viruses almost at any age as we get to be 75 and 80 and 85 and 90 to still have a powerful immune system that's going to protect you against this type of virus. So it's not age related. It's going to take a little more than a standard diet. I guess what I'm saying right now is that it's a gray area because most Americans, because they eat processed foods and fast foods and French fries and bagels and pizza, and because they're overweight, they're all somewhat immunosuppressed. Mm -hmm. So a healthy, so most all people in America do not have excellent health. And that's why we're seeing a virus like this be able to, um, hurt people or kill people at different ages, though, of course, we see the sicker they are and the older they are, the more higher probability of it killing a person. But still, we should see, be able to see the, the you know, it's, it's not just people on immunosuppressive drugs who have ulcerative colitis and rheumatoid arthritis or who have, are taking chemotherapy for cancer. It's also people who are eating healthy and have diabetes, heart disease, or people who are just overweight and eating unhealthily are at mm -hmm. high risk as well. 
okay. But in the event that you do um, accidentally get contaminated and you do come down with COVID-19, um, are there some things that people can do specifically um, in terms of recovering quickly? It's the same recommendations. Our EQG bombs have a big salad every day with a dressing made of nuts and seeds. Put beans on top of your salad, cut up your raw onion or scallion in there. Make sure you have some cruciferous vegetable raw on your salad like cabbage or arugula or kale. Have a bowl of vegetable bean soup with cooked mushrooms in there. Take your mushroom extracts if you want, because mixed mushrooms and mushroom extracts have tremendous things for, you know, have tremendous effects on improving immune function against viruses and have the ergotheanine, which include, which reduce cytokine storm. And so all these things, the quercetins and the, the isothiocyanates and the, all these nutrients in natural plants that I'm mentioning give us the best power to protect our body. And there's not a magic pill that's going to work as well as improving, as, as utilizing nutritional excellence with the full complementary symphony of natural foods that work together to give us great immunity. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I think where I was going with my question was that sometimes people do need a wake-up call to implement the change, and in some cases it's the threat of a disease, and in other cases it's actually getting the disease that then becomes that wake-up call for them to implement the change. And so, you know, given that people are on different ends of the spectrum in terms of just being proactive versus being reactionary and saying, oh my gosh, I've been, you know, eating this crappy food all this time. Um, now I'm sick, you know, what can I do to get better naturally and not be, um, you know, go the medical management route? It sounds like the G-bombs are still the solution to um, um, possibly, you know, if you can't protect yourself because you're not quite ready to make that kind of change, um, if you do get it afterwards, that maybe that could be a solution to help you recover quickly. Well, it's true. I'm saying the same thing to do when you're in good health. There's not some new magical things you do when you're sick. Things that are, you are healthy for you when you're well are healthy for you when you're sick, and things that are healthy for you when you're sick are healthy for you when you're well, number one. Number two, the only thing you could do to what you could do to accelerate the absorption and utilization of these things quicker is to use vegetable juices to bring your level of carotenoids and phytochemicals higher faster than what you can chew all day long because you can't consume enough vegetables chewing you can get more into you and digest them faster especially if you're sick if you juice them or if you blend them so we're saying we make a juice out of one-third cruciferous green like cabbage or kale or bok choy and one-third green lettuce and one-third carrot or beet, maybe with a squeeze of lemon in there or ginger. But the point is we make these juices and we have to give people these juices. So when they, like for example, when people come into my facility, I have a, a, a retreat here in San Diego called the Eat to Live Retreat. And people come here because they're ill and they want to get well, but predominantly because they're, they're overweight and they have food addictions and they want to try to get rid of, you know, eat healthy. And if they, have, if they come here to get well from lupus or multiple sclerosis, or um, psoriasis, or even early stage cancers, we give them a glass of this juice twice a day, this fresh squeezed vegetable juice, to speed up the rate at which the nutrients get into the tissues. Because if they're just chewing everything, it takes longer to get their nutrients up. So we give them the, the supplement or the tea, the mushroom chia tea with the 10 different mushroom extracts. And because we, we give things a little more in liquid form, because their digestive capacity may be somewhat diminished, their appetite can't eat enough of the vegetables, chewing them all so much. And so those are the things we do to accelerate those benefits. Um, um, and also we want people when they do eat a salad and having these raw vegetables, to make sure you chew it to a liquid in your mouth. Don't swallow anything, you chew, 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 make sure you liquefy it before it goes down to get the full benefit from it. Or put it in a high powered blender and make it into a, a green or a blended salad or a salad smoothie so you digest it easier. If you're not gonna chew it well, you're not gonna get the full benefits. You're not gonna get, it's gonna take too long to build up those nutrients in your tissues. So there are some things we could accelerate the rate at which the nutrients are absorbed, but it's mostly chewing, blending, and juicing. Okay, great. So it sounds like the, the best thing to do is prevention, right? So um, just, you know, moving away from that standard American diet or that, you know, 
less egregious standard American diet to more of a nutritarian diet. And then if you do happen to get sick, that um, juicing um, might be a way to accelerate nutrient you know, absorption into your, into your body. Right. Okay, awesome. All right. Well, Dr. Furman, thank you so much for your time. I know you've got a super immunity guided detox event coming up May 11th through the 30th. So I'll include a link to that um, for anyone watching this. And, and, also, um, and of course, my most recent book that came out this last month, it just happens to be coming out right when this epidemic starts, right? It's, all, it's called um, Eat for Life. And of course, the Eat for Life is all about this program I'm talking about to pretend, not get cancer, not get heart attacks, and not get infections. And it became a bestseller within two weeks of which came out. And so I think people should look for that book. The Amazon site is having a problem. They don't have it, they don't have it um, linked right. So you, I think people have to buy it from Barnes and Nobles or some other bookseller on the Eat for Life right now until Amazon gets their app straightened up because it's, I don't know what happened to their site as far as being able to buy the book from them. But in any case, it's kind of interesting how my book came out. My newest book just came out at the same time. So it gives some, obviously I'm promoting that. I want people to read it. It's got tremendous amount of information and, and evidence, more than 2000 references and really make, shows people how to do this and how to make it taste great and make it, so they really be convinced by all this um, overwhelming amount of science that supports it. Okay, great, awesome, so very timely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Furman. I really appreciate you. And it's great to see you again. I know we saw each other in Seattle um, last September, I think it was. So it's always nice to, nice to see you. Thank you. Good, good thing we have Zoom to at least connect with people and see each other, right? Even though we're not in the same house or the same room. Exactly. <laughs> all right. With you and all your listeners. Thank you.